Hey everyone, welcome to this week's video update. Today is, I'm actually recording this on the morning of Saturday, February 22nd. Hope everybody had a great week of trading, had some action. Uh, Monday obviously was closed for President's Day, so I had a four day trading week, but got some nice action at the end of the week. So let's go ahead and jump right in to the alert starting on Tuesday the 18th. And our first trade alert was a rolling adjusting trade in IWM. So we had this long put vertical that we're holding on for that short delta. And of course that did benefit us uh, Thursday and Friday with the market sell off. So we just rolled, it, rolled this out to April with 59 days, extended that duration to keep that short delta in our portfolio. We're at about between one and one and a half to one on our short delta versus our theta ratio. And here's our IWM trade. And, and what you'll notice is we actually, when we roll this out, typically we, we like to roll it so we get about a 60% probability of profit. We rolled this out with less just because we wanted a little bit more short delta, get a little bit more short uh, in our overall portfolio. And so we, we narrowed that so it's a lower pop, but gives us a more benefit to the downside if this, uh, if this thing does continue to run to the downside. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in wheat. So we closed out one set of our iron condors, only had three days to expiration at that point, got a nice move higher, nice bounce higher. Uh, wheat moved up about, uh, at the time we took this off, it was up about two and a half percent on the day. Uh, and so we were able to book a nice profit on that piece of the trade. Now we're still holding uh, another piece, our other iron condor, and you can see prices pretty well centered in that one. So just waiting for some more time to pass on wheat. Next trade, closing trade in SPX. So we had one of our iron ducks. Uh, price had run higher, so we just booked that beak profit. And uh, it still had six days expiration, so there's no reason to hold it, tie up that capital for another six days. There's very little chance of, of it getting back to the uh, duck head. Now, looking after the week has ended now with the two uh, down days, you know, it's probably got a better chance of getting down, but you can't play in hindsight like that. So we took those profits and we're able to redeploy that capital. Um, I'll get to SPX on the platform here in just a second because we did add another one in. But the next trade, opening trade in Amazon. So we put on a duck with 10 days to expiration in Amazon. So we take a look at that. Uh, you can see prices come, in, come down after the sell-off here at late in the week and we're pretty pretty uh, centered in that duck head. And so, you know, we always we always love to be able to put these iron ducks on after a down day, but you also have to stay active and you, and you never know when that's coming. So we, you know, we put a couple of these on, a couple of ducks on early in the week, and then of course price dropped. And so they're already right in our duck head, but uh, that's okay. I mean, that's right where we want to be as, lo as long as, you know, we don't get a, uh, another flush down, we're, we're in fine shape on these iron ducks. Now, we also have a short delta, so a down down move would help those positions. So you, you're kind of looking at it all in a portfolio setting, but managing each trade separately. Next trade, closing trade in NVIDIA. So we had a post earnings short put vertical in NVIDIA, booked over 50% of max profit on that trade. So that was a nice one. In fact, if we would have held the next day, we got even a further move higher. So we got out on this day here after we, we got this and booked 50% of max profit right here, and then the next day just, it fired up even higher. Uh, of course, it's retraced uh, the last couple days with the rest of the market, but uh, good trade in NVIDIA. Next trade, closing trade in oil and CL. So we closed out our short strangle in oil. This thing was kind of hanging out in the lower end of the range all cycle, you know, with this big down move. And then uh, you know, towards the end, we just got this little bounce and we're able to book 50% of max profit. We did get back in with a another alert. And so we are back into oil and you can see applied volatility contracted a tiny bit since we put this on. So we were, we're up a little bit of money, uh, but just playing the waiting game in oil. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in XBI. So price had moved up the range of our short strangle. It had not, as I mentioned here, we did not breach the short call we did not breach the break even but the main but that's really just a reference point our our main focus on these of when to adjust is if there's very little value left in those puts or the untested side 
then there's no, you know, if it continues in that direction, it's not giving us really any help. And so that's when we want to adjust. And so that's what we did. And we just rolled those puts up. Stayed in the same cycle because there was uh, 30 days to expiration still. So we just kept it in March. So if we take a look at XBI, uh, you can see it's come back down basically right to center now. And this, this kind of, if you haven't, if you're newer and you haven't done this before, just remember, you know, after you adjust, it's going to look like you're, you know, you're way down on the trade. It shows down $336. But what this, what, what the platform doesn't take into account is the credit that you already booked on the, on the puts that you closed out. So keep in mind when you're looking at this, it's not going to give you a true accurate depiction of where you are P and L wise, uh, because we've already booked that, uh, that credit on the on the put side that we closed. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, we we talk about that in the uh, short strangles course as well. Next trade, closing trade in Google. So we closed out an iron duck. The price had run higher, so we booked the beak profit on that. Uh, we entered a new Google trade, which I'll get here in a second. Uh, another opening trade, put on another iron duck in Roku, this one with 16 days to expiration. So just layering on these ducks with different expiration cycles. And so if we take a look at Roku, kind of a similar situation as Amazon uh, with this down move in the market, came down into center. Now I had, uh, I had somebody in the community uh, say something about the thinking that we were at kind of our exit point, but... Um, we have a max profit of five hundred dollars, so we're not going to get out till five hundred. Uh, and, and you know, if we were down five hundred, which is way down here, so uh, and, and again, we're right in the middle of the duck head, right where we want to be. Now we got there pretty quickly and swiftly, so sometimes that makes people nervous. But um, but uh, that's we're, we're in good shape in Roku at this point. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in ES. So this is our long put vertical that we're holding for that short delta exposure. So we just extend this, extended this one out to 57 days to expiration. Uh, now keep in mind the market's closed, so you're not seeing the P&L line here. Uh, sometimes these things, uh, the analyze tab can act a little goofy, especially in futures when the market's closed. But price is right here. We did move down with the market down move uh, the last couple of days, and we've got a little bit of profit here since our roll, but uh, it's not showing the PL line uh, at this point, so don't don't worry about that. It'll all adjust and fix itself when the market opens. Uh, next trade with this was the opening trade in Google. We did this one with 15 days to expiration. So if you take a look at that, you can see actually this is this was the one that somebody had a question on. Uh, we've got a max profit of $700, so we wouldn't exit this thing until we were down at least $700, and we're only we're down four something because it came into center here, but. Uh, you know, still a lot of time left, so nothing to do on that. Closing trade in shop. This one was really frustrating. I, I, I really liked this one. In fact, um, in my other account, I actually added to this one um, because of the price action that we were seeing. But, you know, anytime you get a huge flush down in the market, it's going to take everything with it. And so, uh, you know, this was the line after they announced earnings. This was the line of the expected move. And you can see price just continue to react off that, bounce off that, bounce off that. And, you know, I was anticipating just, you know, that continuation to the upside. However, that's not what we got. We got the downside. So we went ahead and closed that out, took a loss on our shop post earning short put vertical. I think that's the first loss on one of those short put verticals that we've had in a couple of years. Uh, and that goes for both the alerts and I can't remember one that we've lost on. Uh, that I've taken in in my personal account either. So they've been really solid, but of course nothing's 100%. So we ended up taking a loss there. Now I I still wouldn't mind getting back in here next week. You know, a, a lot of times it'll bounce off the expected move, and then it'll also bounce off of the last price. And so we've kind of come back down and come close to that. Uh, probably won't do. I don't know. We may do. We may do a short put vertical. Depends on where our overall portfolio is with our. With our uh, with our delta ratio, but uh, you could do a, a, another short put vertical, or the other thing we might look at is just doing an iron duck, where we have that no risk to the upside, but we've got a huge buffer to the downside. So we'll be looking for potential trades, and with implied volatility spiking, I mean, there's going to be a lot of opportunity across the board, uh, and shop being one of those. 
Next trade, opening trade in SPX. So we put on another iron deck with a big down move on uh, Friday. We put on a new iron deck with 21 days to expiration. So if we take a look at that. So now we've got two different ducks. Here's the one from that alert with 21 days to expiration. You can see price is pretty close to where we put it on. We just put that on after the down move on Friday. And then we've got our other one, which expires in, I think, five or six days. And price is just entering the duck head. So just where we want it there. Uh, so that one has, uh, OK, that one has nine days. And then that one has, well, now 20. It's Saturday at the time it's recording. So. That's our SPX ducks. And then we, I already mentioned this and showed this. This is our new opening short strangle in CL in oil. We did this with 55 days to expiration. And then lastly, a closing trade in Delta Airlines. So this was that long put that we put on, uh, you know, with the coronavirus scare and then the airlines talking about shutting, uh, shutting flights down out of China. Um, we just wanted to get short an airline stock, and that's what we did here. Now, we, um, uh, we, we got out at a tiny loss, almost a break even. I, th I think we lost $19 overall on the trade. But uh, we put this on back here, and we were hoping to get a flush down, and it just bounced higher. And then we did get that flush today, and we got out pretty close to the lows, and it did rally back, so it was a good exit. But that was the last trading day for that option cycle. So we had to exit. So we, we are out of that. So those are all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of the other positions. Gold. So we've got this, uh, the one piece from our previous iron condor. And so we've got a few days left until expiration. You can't get assigned on gold futures. And so we're just holding this up to expiration. If we can get a, a flush lower and get back a little bit, then, then that's the goal there. Otherwise, we're going to close that early next week. And then we've got the full iron condor. We can see prices coming up and it's break, uh, breaching our break even here. If we look at just the put side, you can see we still got a little bit of chunk of premium left in those options. So that I wasn't uh, quick to adjust this. So I was going to give it over the weekend. If we get a down movement, we'll be back in range. If price does continue higher, then we will close out this uh, the, the put vertical side. And then we'll potentially add to gold because we'll close out this one in the March cycle. We'll be left with just the call vertical side uh, in the April cycle. And so we'll pr probably add another full iron condor in gold. Natty gas, along with the other energy, has had a nice bounce. So it's come right back up into center here. So just continuing to uh, wait on that one. We've got plenty of time. Yeah, 33 days in Natty gas. So just uh, continuing to hold on to that one. I would like to add to this if implied volatility is still high or if it you know moves to one of our uh, near one of our break evens on either side. But for now, we're just holding ZB. Uh, this was one. Again, don't pay attention to the PL line, but um, this was one that was dead centered and we were close to taking off, just waiting for a little bit more. And we were, we we're going to be able to get out of this trade at an overall profit from where we started. And we've been continuing to adjust and roll this trade. Uh, but then, obviously, with the down move, uh, the price in the down move in stocks uh, created an up move in bonds. And so we're now we're up here. So, what I'm looking to do is I would potentially want to add to this. Implied volatility is nice and high, so we could do another kind of centered short strangle around that. Uh, this current position has 34 days, and then the May cycle at this time has 62. So early next week, we'll be down in our wheelhouse of under 60 days. So we would look to add a short strangle in the May cycle, which is what we will potentially do. Of course, if we get a sharp move lower in bonds, get back to center, we'll probably just book profits here and then you know potentially re-enter a new position out in May. Uh, but we'll uh, we'll look at that early next week. I mentioned wheat, apple, nice move down today, down over a couple percent, and uh, down on Friday, I should say. Uh, so we've after our roll, we've we've uh, created a little bit of profit since that roll, and so we're still battling uh, apple. I mean, we've had this on for short delta, and of course, apple has just continued to rally. So uh, we'll continue to keep this on if we get a little bit. A lower move in Apple early next week. We will roll these uh, roll these strikes down and kind of collect that credit and continue to extend duration. We've got 27 days on this, so if we did that, we would probably also move that out till April with 55 days. Amazon, I mentioned DE. So this was one we were actually 
hoping to put on a post earnings short put vertical. So the the expected move was about four and a half. So it closed at about call it 166. And so if we I'm just going to draw this on here right now, just so I have it. So if it closed at 166, uh, then we would look at about 170 and a half ish. So kind of right in here is the expected move and it opened up way up here. Now, all day it was kind of bouncing high, it's kind of bouncing this level and higher. So we never put on a short put vertical, uh, but we will potentially look to do that next week. Uh, with this huge down move, I just didn't want to fight the movement in the market. And so, and we didn't, and I had I had an order in, but we never got filled because it bounced higher and then I took it off. Uh, but if we get a little bit of a, you know, a sell off into early next week, we might look to, um, uh, add a short put vertical here to see if we can get a, a little bit of a continuation to the upside in John Deere. And then we've got our uh, we've got our short delta position on here, which obviously after earnings busted out of our range. So looking for some downside to uh, to get back into range there. DIA, we've got these two sets of short call verticals. Uh, this one's hanging out right inside range here. That one's in March. And then we've got the one in April where it's hanging out uh, right here. So again, just holding both of these for some of that short delta exposure. Uh, I mentioned Google, IWM, yeah, I mentioned that one. QQQ, very similar to DIA. So we've got one in March. See prices just outside the range, looking for some more downside to benefit that. And then we've got the one in April uh, right there. Uh, I mentioned Roku, SMH, we've had this short strangle on and price has been hanging out in the upper end of the range. Finally got this down movement back into center. Not enough profit to book yet, but uh, holding that. And if we get some applied volatility contraction next week, uh, we could potentially be able to book that one uh, maybe later in the week. SPX I mentioned, SPY, we've got this uh, short call vertical from a previous iron condor, just holding that for some more downside protection. Uh, our bunker trade, we have prices hanging out right here, and so obviously we need a big move. This is for that tail risk protection in, uh, you know, if we get a, a real move to the downside. I mean, keep in mind, when I say real down move, if we look at, going back to SPX, if we look at the chart, I mean, we're still near all-time highs. I mean, that, that feels like a huge down move that we had on Thursday and Friday, but the reality is, all-time highs are at 33.93. We're only at 33.37. We're, you know, this is nothing. This is nothing of a down move. And so remember these VIX bunker trades are, are to protect us against real down moves where we were, you know, we'd get down into this kind of area here and that VIX really spikes. And so uh, still continuing to hold that bunker trade. And remember, we'll hold this down all the way down to a point where there's 60 days to expiration. So we got a long time left in this one. So nothing to do there. Mention XBI, and then lastly, XLK. Uh, we've got this long put vertical on, holding for that short delta exposure. So those short delta positions helped us out this week. And uh, we'll, and as I mentioned in the community, you know, if we go back to ES, I mean, if we get some, you know, continuation to the downside, and we get a, and we get a little bit of a bounce. I would look to add more short delta. You know, like I said, we're about one to one, or about one to one one and a half to one on our ratio. And so I wouldn't mind adding some more in. Um, I'm just not trying to catch a top. You know, obviously we wish we would have done it up here and caught those two days. That would have been, that would have been sweet, but that's not how it works. So we're, you know, if we get this, if we get this continuation of a downside and then we get a little bit of a bounce, we will enter some more short delta at that point and see if we can get a continuation to the downside. So that is the goal. The other thing I wanted to mention is I know uh, our alerts delivery system uh, had an issue. I, they had one last week and then they had one this week to, uh, on Friday. And so, A, we are a new alerts delivery system. We're, we're testing it, but it's, it's, it's very super, super reliable. So we can't wait to roll that out. That's, that's number one. Number two, the reason that we post the alerts in so many different areas is because you know, technology is great these days, but sometimes technology fails us. And so I just want you to understand that, you know, we, we send text messages, we send emails, we post in the membership area at navigationtrading.com, and we post in the community. So there's four different spots. So, you know, what I would tell you is if for some reason, if, if 
the alerts delivery system is not working, we always post in the community in that VIP pro group. That's what that's designed for. So if you are, you know, the market's open at 8.30 Central, 9.30 Eastern, right? I mean, if you don't see any alerts within the first 30, 60 minutes of the day, you need to be checking that community because that's where all the updates are posted. And we also, you know, make sure that you have your uh, notifications set. Um, you know, if you go up to this bell right here, this is the best way to track all notifications in the community. And if you go down here to the settings wheel uh, and you can click and, and set your updates so that you receive notifications because when we post in the VIP pro group, we also hit notify. So, but if you don't have your notifications set up so that you receive them, either on the mobile app or by email or however you want to get them, make sure you have those uh, different things checked. Okay. So, uh, that's all I got for y'all. Hope everybody has a great weekend and hopefully we get some continued volatility next week. Good stuff. This is when trading really gets fun. Have a good weekend. Talk to you next week.